Hello Narathians, this is Vass and I am doing episode 16 of the um, Six Flags Over Norath build. Um, what you see behind me here is the part of New Hollis. Um, this portion of the park I've got the mining coaster, the Dwarven Mining Company, um, it is completed. Um, I just have to do a few house actors and some little bits and bobs there. Um, which I've gone through and showed in the um, episodes prior to this. Um, running through and actually showing off the inside of the coaster and so on. Um, above that, above the mountain, is the log flume or not log flume, sorry, bobsled. Um, the bobsled ride, I am almost finished. I have finished the track portion of it, and today we are going to work on the station and some of the theming around New Hollis. Um... So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Now I had originally put these torches that are the Caledon torches I believe. Let's see. Uh, no, they are blue luminescent stone torch. And I like those but I was thinking I might actually use the ones from City Fest. I haven't used those in, in builds before and I have a bunch of them and I thought those would tie in with New Hollis since they are in New Hollis and part of the New Hollis City Fest. So right now I'm going to get my primary save and I'm going to replace these. Move those up with two of these torches. <clears throat> so flip over to my layout editor, load new from diff, six flags, okay. So I've got these and I'm going to replace them with the Coldane Torch and I'm just going to select the blue luminescence and move those up a few that way they're out of the way and I can easily pick them up and then load that okay and get these out of the way Okay, so I've got those torches in there now. I do think that they need to be rotated a little bit. Well, actually, that one kind of goes with the angle there. Maybe just rotate this one. So it goes with that angle. Tweak these a little bit. There we go. I like that. So, as you see, I've got a lot of items over here. And got these set up. That way I can start to work on my um, station for the bobsled. Um, before I get into that, I grabbed some of these benches, which I totally forgot were on the furniture merchant in New Hollis. So these benches will tie in with the New Hollis part of the park 
very nicely. And I just got grab three and then these curved benches I had in my city festival dungeon because they come from the city festival. Um, I know I want the bench there. I might do another one further on, but for now I'll leave those two rectangle ones. The curved benches I do have an idea for. I'm going to try to just use two if I can to save on item count. Um, if not, I will use the, the third one. Um, but let me show you the track a little bit. I finished it off, off screen. The track goes over itself several, several times in several places. I've got this area up here, which is going to be for my um, station. I need to raise that roof. Let's see. Move these so I can get a new from difference. <coughs> That way I can move them all together and keep them all in the same alignment. And we'll reload. And let's go up one for now. And the reason why I'm having to move those is I originally did the track in this wood, which is the fallen doomfire tree trunk, which is purchasable from the furniture merchant in the Myers library. However, there's five items on there that are the tree trunk related items. Um, there's this one, and then there's one that looks more like this, which is the Vigarlson one. And then there's actual trunks that come up out of the ground like you chopped off the tree and it's hollow on the inside. And there's a Doomfire version and a Vigarlson version of that. Um, however, the fifth one is this one here, which is the hollow Vigarlson tree trunk, and there's not a Doomfire version. So I originally had put these in here. And... Whenever I was in here with Sayrex, I was trying to get in and the lip of these was stopping me from getting into the actual station. Um, so I raised this second um, mining support up, but I need to raise the roof up to match it. Um, and then I don't like the fact that these are different. So I'm thinking of doing the same thing that I did with the Dwarven Mining Company and using the rickety stages for the um, station. So I've got some of those in here for that. And then I'll have to build the stairway up to the actual station. But I'm thinking that would I could put the rickety stage stairs in, have them line up with the base of this post here, this cross beam. And it would still connect, if I did two across, it should still connect with the... Um, a doomfire tree trunk, the fallen doomfire tree trunk on both sides. That way it would be a really nice big open station that you can get in. I could always put on the opposite side another one of the uh, down near dividers. That would block it off from the other side so people can't just walk straight on through. But let's raise this up. 
I've done that part. Get a little closer look. It's hard to see since these are hollow at the top. The beams are hollow at the top. They're invisible. But I think that's good. The invisible part is buried inside the wood. So that's good. That didn't take very long. Okay, so now we can actually start working on the platform. Um, as you might have seen, I have gone through and continued my path. And for the rest of the structure, which was not completed before, I have the station here. And for the station, you'll come out You'll curve around, you'll go up to the highest point, <clears throat> and you will pass by Mr. Yeti. You'll get quite a lot of views of Mr. Yeti along the way. That was one of the things I wanted to incorporate. You've got this drop here that comes down and comes up under and it curves around lots of open areas so you can peek out and see as you're going through here it goes up under the structure and then it curves up and there should be enough uh, momentum since you're coming from up top to get up this way Okay, and then you curve around to the original curve that I first put in with this build. And you're going to go up under the track again, right near the top of the mountain where Mr. Yeti is again. You get to see him again and back to the station. So there are several areas that you can that you go through <clears throat> so let's see came across came down when I came down I looped over and I actually have one of the parts of this area of the park is a bar I mean you have to to have a bar in the Dwarven Barbarian area. So I've got the Brew Barrel Bar here and I've actually got it helping to support the coaster. So I've got that and I will have to do some theming on the inside. If at all possible, I will redo this floor because I love the bar itself, but I'm not real keen on the floor. I mean, it's interesting, it's different, but it just doesn't say New Hollis to me. It's the red-orange, I think. The grays are okay, but the red-orange, I think, is just not really screaming New Hollis to me. <clears throat> and for the supports for the track, I've got them in to where one support supports two parts of the track. It's actually two supports stacked on top of each other, but just to eliminate all the poles coming down. And I have used the Caladim marker stones as concrete supports on the bottom of the really tall pieces. And this one is leaning out just a bit so I had to add a brace for safety. So I've got this brace going up to help hold it in place. So I've got the pathway coming along and it is going to go up under the support here and lead you straight to the bar. 
from here it will also turn off to start your ascent to the entrance for the coaster. So I've got that done. Um, before I do that, I want to get my table set out. Because I've got the brew bar tables and stools here. And I've got a couple little pieces that I wanted to add to it for a little extra theming. Um, don't think I will need this or this, but I think I'm going to keep those. Um, I also have some of the two of the, the steins that we craft that are fizzy. Oops, do not want that gear. Always does it in first person. So I've got the Sudsy Stein and I also have the Fizzy Mug. Those both look like cold, bubbly brews. Now, if you don't drink, they could always be root beer, but these are dwarves and barbarians, so I don't think they are actually root beer. Now, I don't know if you guys see this, but I've noticed that with water tiles, I know Kian has had the issue before, and sometimes they're fixed and they work great. Other times, it's like after they do a patch or something, they glitch out like this. You should be able to see this, but water tiles and mirrors do this to me a lot um, a lot of the times the mirrors will actually turn black uh, on the inside um, at first I thought it was a graphics problem with my um, video card so I updated that there was no problems with that it still had the glitch so it's something with the water tiles sparkly water tiles mirrors anything that has that re reflection which it might be a simple option to change with my reflections um, but we're not going to worry about that right now um, I do want to let's see how big these scale that scale is pretty big that one's bigger because part of the theming of this coaster is Mr. Yeti because Mr. Yeti has as you can see stolen the barrels of ale so I am gonna have him sitting back relaxing and having a drink See if I can get this in his hands good. Sorry, I do get quiet when I'm concentrating. Okay, I know that angle's wrong wow I didn't grab the the moving gear I'm surprised so if I hold control and alt I can do in little small increments down move it in that's Probably as close as I'm going to get it. Other than the fact that it needs to be rotated and maybe rolled. No, not rolled. Let's see. Uh, 
because it needs to be inside his fist area. There we go. <clears throat> I think they did a really good job on his face. It seems very detailed. You, you can see his teeth in his mouth and everything. His fur is kind of blocky, but other than that, I think his face is pretty good. Okay, so that's done. And now I need to set up some tables. Let's see, if I take from the bottom and then I move other items, as you see, they float. They retain where they were because whenever you move something that's raised from the ground, it keeps the distance. However, I don't know if he'll do it since I moved that first one. If you pick from the top, it goes down to the ground because it thinks that the other item below it was the ground level. So it'll pop down to the ground. So if you need to move something to a certain height, you can get it lined up and then just move everything out from underneath it and that I or at least one item from out from underneath it and then the other item should keep its height oops didn't that time maybe it's just the one above yep let's see if it does it for the third Nope, third one pops down. So just the one that was above it. So we need to have enough distance for people to actually sit down and use this. Um, maybe a little closer. sure that I'm not going to get anywhere close to the path. And yes, I could use the layout editor to get these exactly 90 degrees and same distance away from the table and stuff, but I think since it's stools, people will be pulling them out. Um, I do want to be able to have the space to go in between. So I do need to move either this one back or this one back. And I think I'll move this one back. Not much, but just a little bit. <clears throat> now for the next part, I had an idea and I 
played around with it off screen and it worked out for me. That works good. Um, it worked for me off screen, so I thought I would do it in the video. Um, so you could actually see it come to, come to life. So we are going to save from here and we are going to raise our table on both of these and then we're going to raise our torch for both of those torches. These torches are a little big so I will shrink those down. Okay, so the location for the brew bar is where I'm going to actually copy and paste to the torch. Copy that, paste there. That way the center of the torch is at the same spot as the center of the brew bar tables. Okay, these are way too big and now they're bigger than one. So let's do 0.75 and scale, apply, save all. Let's load it in. Okay, that looks cool as it is. Wasn't really what I was going for though. But that's, that's a cool idea. Hmm. But what I'm actually going to do is raise these up because uh, the center of that the bottom of the torch is at the bottom of the table so I need to move these up moved them up three okay now that might not be far enough but we'll see and to roll those 180 degrees that way they're flipped upside down exactly. Okay, they are invisible on the top, which a lot of things have been like that. I hate that, but gotta deal with it. So let's go up a little bit more. Let's try one up. <clears throat> Okay, that is too far. So let's start doing point ones down. We'll do three. Okay, that's better. Let's do one more. That's good. Okay, so now I like that positioning, so I'm going to save from there. And I'm going to lift these up. These are rotate or rolled already 180 degrees, which works out in my favor. So I can copy and use the center point, which will be here. The center point of this item is at the bottom. As you see, whenever I roll it, it's at the bottom or close to the bottom at least and I hit escape to put it back <clears throat> and I am going to copy these can I erase that one yeah I did okay so then my second save compare the two there we go there we go whoa woven reed bowl and torches so let's copy and paste copy and paste okay let's apply those so now my bowl is rolled 180 but it changes it to 0.999 
Okay, so those are there now. Let's make these bigger. And what I tried off screen was different types of bowls and such, but I found that this one got big enough to be an umbrella. And I also like the fact that it's kind of got this curve, which would be the bottom of the bowl, but for the umbrella, it's the top, it's got that slight curve on it, which works out really good. And I'm just going to move that up just to cover up that last little bit there. Okay, so now we have... I could probably go up more. Let's go up to there. Okay, so now we have uh, tables with umbrellas. And I think that it's rustic enough with the woven reed to be considered part of um, New Hollis. So we've got that there. Let's see, I think someone left their brew out. Who knows, maybe there'll be a house actor there. Um, I don't think I'm going to use these right now, so I'm going to go ahead and pick these up. <clears throat> and I do have a trash can over here, so once I finish my pathing, I can put the trash can in. But I wanted to be able to have some outside tables that you could sit out, watch the ride, watch the scenery, people watch. Okay, next thing I want to do, and this might show you a problem. Um, what I'm thinking, I'm wanting to use the round benches to go around a tree. I've wanted to do that for a long time. I think I might have done it once before, but I'm wanting to use it to go around a tree. Um, so I've got this tree here. This one is a tall pine. It is not frosted because it's not up there. It's at the bottom of the mountain. But I've got that there and I will, I'm going to use the circle tool. Um, the problem is, is a lot of times with the circle tool, it will pull, it will pull items from within the house if you're using the same items within the house. Um, that's why I do a lot of my work with the copy paste method rather than the circle tool. I use the circle tool for like the bushes and stuff like that, for the carousel and the fencing. But that was when I didn't have any other fencing in here and I didn't have any other uh, r yellow rose topiaries in here. So it didn't have anywhere else to pull it from. Um, I have tried to duplicate parts of this path with... Um, using the duplicate function in the layout editor and it would pull a random book from here and over here and so on. So that doesn't work out too well. Even when you have them in the moving crate, sometimes there's the issue of that. But I've got my books here. Let's see, I am going to go ahead and put these in the crate. Let's see. Put in moving crate, there's one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, and nine. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my tree here. I'm going to save with those books in the moving crate. I am going to raise my tree and save with out. And what that will do is give me a center point to work with, the center point of that tree. So then I pull up the layout editor, load that up. There's my information for the tree. So I can use that for my center point. And I'm going to go to tools, create object, circle or spiral. Actually, let me do one thing first. Okay, I saved that one. Well, let's see, my tree is up, which is fine. It's not completely out of the ground, so that's okay. So my tree is up. I don't have to move it up anyways at this point. So I've got my save there. I can move my book. And I'm going to move my tree and save my second save. And excuse me, just one moment. Sorry about that, I had a cough. <clears throat> so reload my difference. I've got my tall pine and I got my information for my book. So let's go ahead and create that book. Apply. It's in my crate. There's that tab for crate. Now I'm just working with the difference, but if you worked with that main first save, it would have everything listed in the whole entire park, every item. And you would have a crate tab, <clears throat> which will show every item that is in that crate. So I've got this one here. I'm gonna go to create circle spiral. And for my center point, I'm gonna copy this information. So copy that, paste it there. You want to make sure just that box of numbers is highlighted, including any negatives. And paste that there. And my Y, copy that and paste it there. Okay, number of steps. I know that I had nine total books I was using, so that's the max that I can go to at this point. Theoretically, so it does not pull from another area. However, I have been, I've had issues in the past where it still will pull from the area, other areas because it has the same ID and leave the ones in the crate in the crate. Or it might pull three from the crate and the rest of them from somewhere else in the house at random locations, which is annoying. But we will see what we can do here. Um, number of steps is how many times I want it to go around. Um, so I am going to do, I, I will just do six for now. Total angle is I don't want a half circle, which would be 180. I want a full circle. So it'd be 360 degrees. <clears throat> Radius is the distance from the center of that tree to how far out I want it to go. Um, so if you think of a tile 
which is normally scaled at one when you put it down, that would be one meter. That one meter is the distance that you would use. If that's too big, you could go smaller and so on. We will just use one meter for now. So one radius. Um, start angle that if you're if you have to have it at a specific angle to line up with something else, then you can adjust the angle here to get it to curve around and start flat or start angled a little bit or so on. Um, Z increase will increase the Z, which is up down. So if you did a negative, it would go down with each book for instance, since we're going to be using books, it will go down whatever number you put in there. If you put in one, you'll place that first book at zero. The next one will be at negative one. Um, or if you put positive one, it would go up. That next book would be at positive one. The book after that would be positive two, positive three, and so on. That's a good way of making spiral staircase, staircases or spiral ramps and so on. So the Z is mainly used for the spiral portion of this layout. <clears throat> the radius increase. That is also if you wanted to do a spiral, but you're wanting to do a flat spiral. So if you were starting from the center and you wanted to do a pinwheel flat on the ground, you could use that that tool and the radius will increase whatever amount so if you start at one it will do the first one at one then the next one will spiral out further it will go two away from the, the center point the next one will position three from the center point and so on if you did point one it would be it would increase by point one and so on um, item name, you don't have to put this. You can put it. It's not um, necessary. Um, it's just up to you if you want to put it. And you would just put book. Don't have to put anything at all. The item ID, you can also copy the name here <clears throat> and put it there if you want. It's just for your reference. Um, I'm actually going to use it, leave it in A. That way, whenever it does them, it'll be listed as in A. Um, item ID. I need the item ID of the book. Now you see why I wanted to have the book available in the layout editor. So I can just copy that ID. Just the ID, not the whole box. So I paste that. Okay, this is the part that's important if you're using it from the crate. Even though, like I said, it doesn't always work. Use UID from crate. Okay, so I am going to use that. And it says UID from crate, which it should be this. Which is weird because this is item ID. So I wonder if there's some issue with that. And that's why it doesn't always pull it from the crate. But anyway. <clears throat> okay, item scale would be what scale you want the book to be. So uh, generally it's going to be three as the max for books. Um, if you wanted to, you could have done your book at max scale so you could see what the max scale would be. But generally, it's three. Um, item starts rotation. If you want to have it start its rotation at a certain point, like if you were doing 180 instead of 360, you could have it start at a certain point and go from there. That way, you could do a smiley face or a frowny face, that kind of thing. A rainbow 
or a valley. One of those things. Um, you could do a left half circle, right half circle, whatever. Um, we are not going to mess with those because we're doing a full circle and I really don't need those. Um, however, this is also how it starts out with the original positioning of the item. So, the books, <clears throat> which I will go back here. Okay, so do I have any of the red books? Yes. I have one right here. So this is the original placement of the books. And as you see, that is standing up. I'm actually wanting to, wanting it to lay down like like to look like bricks. So if it let's see, is it pitch? No, it's not pitch. It is roll. Okay? So, I'm just going to hit escape. So, if I go back to my layout editor. So, my original, I want to have it rolled at 90 degrees. Okay. So, and my center point, I can adjust up because this is the center point of that tree. So, my books, whenever I put them down, are probably going to be buried in the ground and I will have to raise them but I will deal with that when I get to it so I've got my roll at 90 so they'll all be laying down instead of standing up and I've got six I think that is it you can name it uh, planter name it whatever you want you can also select the plane that it's going to work on <clears throat> which if I were doing a circle on a wall I could select that that plane um, whether it's going to be on the east wall east or west wall or north or south wall um, and that would be, you know, adjusting whether it's negative or positive to get that. Um, as far as the rotation, you could rotate it negative and that would put it on the south. Rotate positive would be the north and so on. We are going to stick with the floor. We're going to create that. Could not replace five UIDs out of six. I know I have them on in the crate so that, that's bull <laughs> so from here the reason why it did that is because I didn't have the items in the crate on my save but I've got these here and they say in a I did that on purpose so I could see them I'm going to apply, save all, and cross my fingers that it does not pull it from somewhere else in the house. <clears throat> so far, it, oh, it did. One, two, three, four. Hmm, I think I just figured out my problem. The reason why it's pulling it from the house is because it gave me that message that it could not pull five out of the six from the crate. Huh. So let's reload this and apply save all it still got them there because it was here that sucks okay so let's move my tree out of the way now that I know the problem I can fix it though
I think I just taught myself something. It's a good thing I was talking through this with you guys. Because I think I just taught myself how to fix my issues that I was having problems with. So, someone that works with the layout editor for a long time will still learn as they go. I have to reteach myself stuff all the time. I'm just shrinking those down right now because I've got these five gaps. One, two, three, four, and five. But you saw how it took from random places. So I'm going to fix those. So I've got those smaller. And I've got this one, this one. I'm going to do those first. Sorry for going on a tangent to fix my errors, but it happens. Okay, so I've got those. I did not use max scale on those for the path. I used 2.75. So I'm going to copy, paste, copy, paste. And if I remember, because I've done so many of these pathing pieces, the exact movement is 1.69. I figured it out because I got tired of moving everything 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and so on. <clears throat> so I am moving these to the north. That's why I always have my compass there, which you can also use your compass if you highlight it, it will tell you the house you're in, your location, and your camera heading. Um, which my location is negative 45.98, negative 1.08, and negative 29.05. So if you ever move anything inside a house and then you don't know where it went, you can kind of use that to go to that location of the item to figure out where it is so I've got those I need to move these 1.69 north apply save all and they're in place now let's do that with this one which is I saved it first and then this one because both of those will move north 1.69 and we'll do this one and this one we will reload it's going to take a second because I'm uploading there we go copy paste copy paste and move those to 1.69 to north apply save all load okay we just have one more to fix which if I remember correctly this one's a pain in the butt because it's got that overlap but we will see raise this one that's one to save let's watch for it there it is so now it should load up in here there we go 2.75 copy there paste there and 1.69 Southeast. Southeast. <clears throat> oh, that worked out better than I thought it would. Yay. Okay, easier. Now, one rule of thumb that I have explained in previous videos that I will continually explain. 
Whenever you place a tile or anything down in a house, it defaults to placing at a 90 degree, um, actually a zero degrees. It places it automatically north, south, um, east, west, right dab in the middle. So that way, if you need to copy that tile and move it to the north, it, you can just move it to the north and not have to move it to the north and move it a little bit to the east and stuff like that. If you need to build at an angle, put the tile down, change the angle with the layout editor to 45 degrees. Even if you rotate it in the house by hand, it doesn't put it exactly 45 degrees. But if you rotate it first to that 45 degree angle, then whenever you move that tile, copy that tile and move another one right beside it, 12 degrees, because the default of a tile is six, except for the marketplace tiles, which they go to a max 12, they get twice as big. Um, if you move that tile 12, because the standard radius of max scale of a tile is six, if you move it 12, it will put it side by side. And if you're doing it at a 45 degree angle, instead of moving north, you will be moving it northeast. And then from that tile, if you need to build off from there in this direction, you would just move it 12 to the southeast. Um, that way your tiles will line up seamlessly without shimmer, without gaps, without a little hole in the middle of them, without being off crooked, anything like that. They will line up seamlessly. Just stick to the zero, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. Um, if you do that, you will have a whole lot less issues. If you put a tile down in the house and you rotate it by hand and then try to copy from there, it's going. the next piece is going to shift. So if you're trying to move to the east, that next tile will, and you don't have it down exactly positioned to the east, it will shift from that one. And it will start going zigzag on you as you're going through putting the next tiles down and so on. Which becomes a big mess. And it's the same thing when you start building the walls around those tiles and so on. Or trying to build ceilings. Every single thing that you put from that point on will have to be rotated manually and moved manually to get it lined up. So the layout editor will not help you at that point. So it's best to start out with the 0, 45, or 90 degree. Rant over. <laughs> so back to our build here. So I have those in my crate. So I am going to take those out of my crate. And let's see if I can fix this issue once and for all. Because if so, I'm going to have to share this with, well, Demora and Zarex will be watching the video. But I'm definitely excited if this fixes it so they will see that we've got a solution to our problems that we were having. Or at least I do. Okay, so I've got my nine books out, which I'm not using them all, but they're out. So I am going to move all of these. One, I got to save before I did this. Two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and nine. <clears throat> And let's move our tree. And move the tree. So I should have nine items. No, nine books and one tree. Yes, nine books, one tree. Okay, I'm going to highlight those. Control click and highlight those. And create true. Click it, all those went into the crate now. So those nine are in the crate. Uh, technically at this point, if I wanted to, I could save and load them and they will all go into the crate. <clears throat> but I'm gonna go from here. So create object, circle spiral. It retains your information, which is good. It's got my ID, all that information. I did notice that the books in the house were up under the tree. I think I need to rotate them because they were kind of jumbled in there overlapping each other. <clears throat> Made more of a star effect. So let's see if I rotate Let's try rotating it. We could try rotating 90 degrees. See how that comes out. Oops. Group. Let's delete my group. So I can reuse that group. Or you could just rename it something else. Rotate 90. Oops. Okay. And I use six books. I've got my six books that are in the group. Seven total, counting that. So let's say that I did not get the message this time, that error message that said that I didn't have enough in the crate. <clears throat> so the fact that when you're doing a new from difference, if they're not in the crate here, then it doesn't recognize that they're in the crate in the functions that you're using. So that makes sense to me. Apply, save all, let's load it, see how it looks. Okay, I moved my tree, but that's where it is. That's Kind of cool, but not quite what I was wanting. So 90 was too far. Let's do. Okay, we're going to delete this group. Actually, let's reload. Delete the group. Put these back in the crate. Crate, true. Okay, they're back in the crate now. <clears throat> so, circle spiral. Instead of 90, let's do 45. They also looked really close together, which if you look at the, the center, that's really close together, and that tree will not... The, there's not enough space based on the center point of this book it's right there so if I did 45 and they line up like that it's not going to give enough space so let's change our radius to 1.5 so it's got that done main tab and apply edit save all much better it's not quite 45 degrees it's a little bit much because if I rolled it rotated it back they would start lining up so that's much better um, yeah 
that's much better. Okay. Let's go back. And we will do the same thing we did. Create true. Let's get rid of the group. And it saves our information from the last time we used it. 1.5 was good. 45 was not. Let's try 40. And main tab, apply, save all. Load it back in. Oh, nope. It needs to be the opposite direction. So, reload. Delete create. Main tab. Put these, or delete group. Then put those in the crate and create object circle spiral so it needs to go the opposite direction so let's try 50 ah main tab apply save all that's actually pretty close let's see if I did it a little bit more, just a little bit more, that would work. And this is where I start to get picky. So I reloaded, let's delete the group, put them back in the crate. And I'm just putting them back in the crate because with the circle tool, I'm saying use it from the crate. That way I can specify, use the ones from the crate, not the house. So they're back in the crate. Back to the main tab. Object, circle, spiral. So let's do 51. Ugh, main tab. Apply, save all. Much better. Now, yes, there is shimmering, but I can actually select three of the six and lower them <clears throat> just a hair. So I've got those there. And save that, and I am going to. Raise three of these opposite. Now you can do this manually, but you're not going to have the same heights on them as you can see. You might get close, but it's not going to be exact. So save that. Reload. Let's get rid of that crate or that group. Come on, reload. There we go. So these. You can do 0 0.01, but they, and that will go down just a little bit. Um, but it will still show a shimmer from a distance, from a certain distance, which is pretty close up at 0 0.001. Um, even if you did, you know, 0.01 from far enough away, if it still renders, you could still see a shimmer with overlapping items. But what I generally do is 0 .003 and Sayrex, I talked to Sayrex earlier and that's what he generally does as well. Um, and then I'm gonna go down. You can go down or up, doesn't matter. Okay, so those are down. And now as you see, there's not that shimmer. So let's put my tree in the middle there. Okay, so I've got that. I am going to raise these up, get a new from difference again. Just so I'm working with these. <clears throat> and it saves the current location. It's just 
getting a difference. So I can get only those items and work with only those items. And I'm going to move it up 0.5 on everything. Still retains those that are 0 0.003 down, but it moves all of them up 0.5. Okay. That's pretty cool, but I still want more of that diamond to show. So let's do... A point, another point 0.5 is probably too much, but we'll see. It's a little bit too much. So let's go down point 0.1. There we go. I like that. I like that. Okay, so now that I've got that in there, let's see if I can move the tree just a little bit. There we go. Actually, it needs more centered this way. There we go. That's cool. Okay, so I'm going to take my tree, <clears throat> raise that, and raise my mound of fireflies. And it's taking a moment on my computer to load it because I am currently uploading. Oh, that's EQ2 Furniture. If you haven't used it, I use it all the time. That's how I found the benches that I was going to use to work with. Um, Lyra site. You probably know Lyra for Home Show, but the benches, I went through here looking specifically for ones that were very much themed as um, New Hollis. So I did a search under benches and I came across, if I can ever get to them, we got a lot of benches. And there's the curved bench, which I knew about, but I didn't, I had forgotten about this one. And then I found it, found out that you can actually purchase it from the furniture merchant, which I had totally forgotten about. So then I went to the furniture merchant in Frost Fancy and bought it. But I am currently uploading and I'm at 62%. Okay, oops. Layout editor. Okay. So I've got the tall pine. I'm going to copy that so I have the center point and paste it to the grassy knoll of fireflies. And let's raise it up one while we're at it. Go back to the game. And one is too much. But I should be able to just lower it down. There we go. And it needs shifted because it's poking out a little bit here. And you can see through it over on this side. So I'm going to get a save of just the fireflies. Move those fireflies so I can get a difference with just the fireflies. There we go. And let's try moving points and I need it to move this way which would be southeast <clears throat> yep, southeast from me so let's go southeast we'll go a couple and load it ok 
Okay, it's better. It could still be some more. Do two more. Might be too much, but we'll see. Okay, I'm starting to see holes over on this side. And it's poking out, so that was too much. So, opposite of southeast is northwest. So we'll go, well, let's go back just one, because I did two. Okay, it is still poking through a little bit, so... I'm going to go back, oh, not southeast, northwest. Go back. So it's not poking through. And then what I might do here is either A, make it a little bigger. Nope, poke it, pokes through when I make it bigger. I can adjust it to where it's not showing through or showing through it. Such a small amount. Okay, lower that in. And then what I'll do is I will get a rounded tile and put that in there which I don't have one on me but I can do that on another episode so then I have another planter there now for my bench and this is going to be the troublesome part because I don't I seriously don't think I don't want to go too big because we are talking about doors here. Or, um, doors and barbarians. Barbarians would work. Hmm, I might have to do three. Might not have a choice here. Let's pick you up. Oh, I don't have room in my inventory because I picked up all those things. Okay, let's just move you out of the way. Start with one of these fresh. Keep it as default for now. And it's not going to be perfectly round. going into the planter. Now why does it keep dropping my my bench into the ground? There we go. Okay, let's scale it up one. Line it up. Rotate it a little bit. It's going to be a little weird because it's a three-sided item. And I was hoping that with six books it would line up good. But you know what? Maybe I can get it to work. If I make it bigger... Oh, come on. Line it up here. Where 
meditate a little bit. Sorry, I'm getting quiet because I'm concentrating. And instead of having it all the way up, like it is here, just have it partially up. Only problem is it starts to cover up my diamonds. That kind of sucks because the diamonds were looked good. But I guess it's okay. You could still see them when you get close to them. <clears throat> okay, so let's go with this one. We'll raise it and raise the smaller one so we can get new from difference. Wait for it. Wait for it. Come on, there we go. Okay, so the larger one. I hate the weird numbers. 1.4, copy that one. Paste the other one to it. Load it. Okay, now let's take this one and let's rotate it 180 degrees. Work for me. I know you're three-sided, but still. Okay, so from there, I'm not gonna be able to go exactly north because of the angle, but I can get it close. If I wouldn't have rotated it to line it up to those books and rotated all those books, that would have made this easier. But it would have been harder to rotate all the books. That would have been working with the circle tool some more. So, move to north. Okay. So it shifted to the east a little bit because of the fact that it should have gone north by northwest. Okay, so now that I've got it over here, let's get it kind of lined up. manually like this which is pretty good in my opinion there we go it's a little going a little bit through there <clears throat> So we'll take this, save it where it is, move them both up, and we will shift it because it's going through this brick here, which is on this side of the planter. Um, which is close to north, I can move this all like point one to the north. I did do a second. Yes, I did. Okay. Load. Move it. Point one north. Now it's sticking through on this one. So move it point oh five south okay it's not sticking through on this one just barely sticking through on that one let's change up our thoughts here let's make it 1.5 
scale. Okay, that works out pretty good. Now, if I copy the up down coordinate of this one and put it on that one, they will be the same height. and have the shimmer where they overlap and then I can take that one and go down 0 0.003 there we go not ideal but better It's like that. I don't like the fact that it's on the bricks. Okay, I've got those. Let's group modify this. Rotate it 15 degrees based off of the location points see negative 15 let's do negative 20 or negative 51 negative 26 rotate it 15 degrees oh. would help if I actually did it there then apply and save wrong direction And not quite far enough either. So let's do negative 40 degrees. Rotate. Okay, that's a little better, but I'm gonna have to shift it. Okay, oh, not add to group. Group mod. Let's do it another negative 10. Okay, so it kept everything together and just rotated it around that position I was putting in. So now I just need to rotate or move it. So let's take that and we will move it point five. What direction here is this? Uh, west. Let's try west. 0.5 west. Okay. From here, looks like I moved a little bit too far to the west. Needs to go northwest. <coughs> northwest. You don't go into the bricks. Oh, that's so close. So, so close. That's right there at the bricks. If I can move the whole thing to the south a smidge. Point O two south. Now, right now, I'm just worried about the positioning of the benches. Couple more to the south. In alignment with the, the pavers. Should be all I need. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's in alignment with the pavers. Now, gotta set new save. Move, move, move. 
all of you guys. Get new save, second save, come on, there we go, load it, and we are going to move all those uh, 0 0.5 southeast. Too far south that time. So with smaller increments, 0 0.01 northwest a couple of times, and north just to try to get it off of those benches. getting closer and closer to the west so now I'm gonna go a little bit to the northeast to pull it away from the west okay that is probably as close as I'm getting it okay so I can always come back and put that rounded tile in there <coughs> which by the way rounded Or is it round? Nope, it's rounded. Probably the rounded um, granite rounded tile. That one's probably going to be the best bet. I could do the sand, sanded, but it, or the sandstone, but that's going to be too bright with that green. But the granite. That might look more like muddy soil underneath. Mm, what about the mossy? Mm, that might work. The mossy might work. And technically, I could have done the books to match this and then it would have been lined up seamlessly so one two three four five ten sided so it had been ten books but I think it's okay the way it is right now <clears throat> if I wanted to I could have just used this planter but it doesn't really go with the theme that would be more XR. But yes, I am thinking granite round tile. I seriously doubt I have any.
Nope. No matching found. Okay. So, I will have to craft one of those. I'll do that at another time. Um, I'm okay with these. Let's see. I guess I, I got my bench here. I've got my benches here. Um, and I've got tables here, so I really don't need any more benches. And this stuff isn't stacking. And my bags are so full of house items for all the, the various houses I'm working on. This is currently the only one that I am videoing. So the next thing that I should work on, since I can't do that tile just yet, is um, I could continue my path. And I should do the path all the way up to the stairs here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see how many books do it. I don't have any of the red books out because I put some in the moving crate. Now I do have those in my inventory. So let's retrieve, retrieve, and retrieve directly from the moving crate, not the house window. See, and these books are the elements, and these are the other ones. <clears throat> Let me just put some of these down over here. It is starting to get hot here in Texas. So two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. We'll go with ten for now. Okay, so I've got those down. I've got a first save. Now I'm going to raise one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go nine, ten. This is going to be a bunch of them. But we will see. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, excuse me just a second.
Okay, sorry about that. that phone call. Okay, where was I? Let's get the rest of these saved. And technically, I can move all of these red and all of these brown at the same time. But I'm just going to use the do the red for now, and then do the brown in a separate one. So I've got one, two, I've got ten raised here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, save that and go to my layout editor and load them up. I'll make sure all the larger ones are at the top. And since I'm working with a lot of them, I'm just going to do that. Make that a little bigger so I know that's the stopping point. And it's all the same items. So I can copy, paste, copy, and paste. And I want, since each of these have a different position, I am copying and pasting those different positions. Now, if I just wanted to copy everything to the same place, I could just copy one of these and paste it on all of them. But I am doing uh, 10 different positions. So, 5... And 6... And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And to go up to the next one that's still at one. Let's see, that one should be eight. That should be eight. And nine, which is nine. And ten. Meet in the middle, 10. Okay, so then all of these are copied from all of those. And there is one, two, three, four, five rows. And each one moves up point, 1.69. So I highlighted all those. I typed in my 1.69. I know there's five row, rows. I need to move it to the north. So one, two, three, four, five. Apply, save all. And I've got another section of the path done. Minus the, the brown books. Okay, these are glitching a little. Let's see, are all of them glitching a little? Yes, which can be fixed. It's a pain in the butt that it does it sometimes. Just raise them up. I didn't do a save first, and there's a reason. Just raise it up. And then use your load three, which was the original load, to put them back. And that usually fixes where they tend to disappear at the edge of your screen. And it worked. Okay, so technically I need at least one more on each side. So I'm going to have to put a couple more books. Let's see, I've got those here. One, two, save, 
move you and you and you and you. New save, load it, and copy paste. The method I use the most. And then move those two north to make one row. And done. I could do another one here, but that also means I'll have to put brown here. And I, I don't really care to do that. I would just end the path here and then they take the steps up. So I did one, two, three, four, five six rows. So I have to do six rows of these books here. Now if you notice the this book over here on this side is actually buried into the brick a little bit and this one is not. And the reason being is because of my angle here this path starts a little bit smaller which is fine. That means I had enough space to go up under here which I was worried about. Okay, so I've got that done there which is the same here to line these up down here and keep the books the same scale as the other books this moved out so I could get my angles good. <clears throat> so now I need to do six that way, which is going to be 12 books. And how many books do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. Do I have some, uh, some in other places that I can use? There's nine brown books there. 10, 11, 12. So I will save and then I will be, I will move the four from here first. One, two, three, four. And we would just do four at a time. So there's four. And one, two, three, four. The video is starting to get long at this point. So I'm going to do these. And then I'm going to call it the end of the video. Take a break and come back for the next episode to do, to finish off these and the pathing for this and then start working on the station which I was supposed to do in this video but that tree planter took longer than I anticipated. So that is two sections so we'll move it north to okay so done there and when we come back we will remove some of the brick pavers here so we can start to go up and get our pathing and we will get our station done and finish the pathing which will be using the stages and the stairs. Okay, so I will see you guys in the next video.